Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh and you are watching Our History. Today we are going over the life of Bartolomeu Deus, the first European explorer to successfully navigate around the southern coast of Africa. So if you enjoy this, please be sure to like and if you are new here, consider smashing the subscribe button. If this isn't your first rodeo and you haven't shown some love to that subscribe, now is your opportunity. Thank you for watching. Bartolomeu Deus was a Portuguese mariner and explorer achieved a significant milestone in 1488. He became the first European navigator to successfully circumnavigate the southern tip of Africa, proving that the most efficient route for ships travelling southward lies in the open ocean west of the African coast. His discoveries paved the way for establishing the sea route between Europe and Asia. Early Life Bartolomeu Deus, born in 1455, came from a family with a strong maritime background. One of his ancestors, Dinis Dias, had already explored the African coast in the 1440s, discovering the Cape Verde Peninsula in 1445. Due to the existence of other Portuguese seafarers of the same name, it becomes challenging to trace his exact biography. However, it is evident that Deus was an experienced seaman, possibly involved in ivory trading along the Guinea coast as early as 1478. In 1481, he joined an expedition led by Diogo de Azambuja to establish a trading post named Aseo George de Mina in the Gulf of Guinea. There is also indirect evidence suggesting Deus's potential involvement in a Diogo Keo's first expedition from 1482 to 1484 to the Congo River voyage around Africa. In October 1486, King John II of Portugal commissioned Bartolomeu Deus to lead an expedition in search of a trade route around the southern tip of Africa. The goal was to establish a route that would allow for easier access to India and East. Dias was also tasked to find Prester John, a legendary figure who believed to be a powerful Christian ruler somewhere beyond Europe, potentially in the African interior. He embarked on his voyage with two caravels and a supply ship, accompanied by skilled pilots such as Pero de Alenque and Joa de Santiago. Unfortunately, no contemporary documents of this voyage exist due to the destruction of the maritime records during the 1755 Lisbon earthquake and the tsunami that ensued. Much of the available information comes from the 16th century historian Yahoo de Barros, who wrote about the voyage some 60 years later. In July 1487, a small fleet departed from Lisbon, Portugal, on a voyage led by Bartolomeu Dias. Similar to his predecessor, Diogo Caio, Deus carried padreos, which were stone pillars used to mark significant landfalls. The fleet also included six Africans who had been captured by Caio and taught the Portuguese language. Deus intended to disembark these individuals at various points along the African coast, allowing them to bear witness to the magnificence of the Portuguese kingdom and to gather information about the legendary Prester John. This expedition aimed to expand Portuguese influence and explore new trade routes in Africa. The expedition led by Bartolomeu Deus set sail for the Congo and then proceeded cautiously along the African coast. They often named significant geographical features after saints celebrated in the Catholic Church. Upon reaching Porto Alexandre, Angola, Dias left the supply ship behind for later resupply on their return journey. By December, Dias had surpassed the furthest point reached by Keo, and on the 8th of December 1487, he arrived at Golfo de Concia Caio known today as Walvis Bay, Namibia. Progress along the Namibian coast was slow, and eventually the two ships turned southwest, away from land. Historians are divided on whether this was due to being driven offshore by a storm or a deliberate attempt to find favorable winds. Whether its cause, the change of course brought them success. The ships traced a broad arc around the tip of Africa, and on the 4th of February 1488, after 30 days in the open ocean, they reached this continent's southern cape and entered what would later become known as Mossel Bay. The ships continued east for a time and confirmed that the coast gradually 
tended towards the northeast. Diaz realized that they had accomplished Portugal's long-sought goal. They had rounded the southern Cape of Africa. His expedition reached its furthest point on the 12th of March, where he anchored at Quaihook, near the mouths of Busmans River. There, they erected the Padre de Seo de Gregorio. However, due to low supplies and the ships being battered, the crew became restless and urged Diaz to turn back. Despite wanting to continue, Diaz agreed to return to Portugal. During their return voyage, they encountered the Cape of Good Hope for the first time in May 1488, sailing close to Africa's southwestern coast. Tradition has it that Diaz originally named it the Cape of Storms or Cabo das Tormentas and that King John later renamed it the Cape of Good Hope, Cabo de Bo Esperanza, because it symbolized the opening of a sea route from west to east. The Cape of Good Hope was a significant milestone in Bartolome Deus' expedition. After erecting the last padreos or stone pillars, the crew continued their journey northward. However, the subsequent months were fraught with challenges and when they finally reached their supply ship in July, they discovered that six of the nine crewmen had died in skirmishes with the native people. Furthermore, the vessel had been infested with worms, rendering it useless. As a result, they had to unload the necessary supplies and burn the ship on the beach. The exact details of the rest of the voyage are scarce, but it is known that the ships made stops at Principe Rio do Resgate, present-day Liberia, and the Portuguese trading post of São Jorge da Mina. Eventually, after an abscess of 16 months, Diaz returned to Lisbon in December 1488. The expedition's significance lies in its extensive exploration of approximately a thousand additional miles of the African coastline. Additionally, the crew successfully rounded the southern tip of the continent, establishing that the most efficient southward ship route veered into the open ocean well west of the African coast. This new route would serve as a blueprint for future Portuguese sailors for generations to come. Despite these successes, Diaz's reception at court was muted and there were no official proclamations and at the time Diaz received little in recognition of his accomplishments. Later years Diaz was later ennobled for his accomplishments and by 1494 he was serving as a squire in the court of King John II. He also served as superintendent of the royal warehouse from 1494 to 1497. Following a successful first voyage around Africa's southern Cape, Diaz returned to Portugal in triumph. However, the country faced various challenges causing a decade-long hiatus in Indian Ocean exploration. King John grappled with personal difficulties, such as the death of his only son, ongoing conflict in Morocco, and declining health. It wasn't until 1497 that another expedition was authorized, with Diaz lending his expertise to the design and constructions of the ships Seo Gabriel and Seo Rafael. These vessels were pivotal in Vasco da Gama's renowned journey around the Cape of Good Hope to India. While Diaz joined da Gama in for the initial portion of the voyage, he remained in Cape Verde Islands. Two years later, Diaz captured a second Indian expedition led by Pedro Alvarez Cabral, which became the first to reach Brazil on the 22nd of April 1500 before continuing onward to India. In May 1500, Bartolomeu Deus met a tragic end while leading a ship near the treacherous Cape of Good Hope. On the fateful day of the 29th of May, four ships, including Deus's, were battered by a massive storm which ultimately led to their demise. This unfortunate event marked the loss of Deus's life and spelled the end of the ill-fated vessels. The exact circumstances surrounding the incident remain unclear, but it serves as a poignant reminder of the dangers faced by the early maritime explorers in their quest for new horizons. Personal life Deus was a married man with two sons named Simeo Deus de Novias and Antonio Deus de Novaes. His grandson, Polo Deus de Novaes, played a significant role in Portuguese history. Polo Deus de Novaes 
went on to become the first governor of Portuguese Angola, a Portuguese territory in Africa. Additionally, in 1576, he founded the city of Sao Paulo, Luanda, which is now the capital of Angola. This historical figure's contributions in establishing a colonial presence in Angola and founding a major city have left a lasting impact on the region's history. Legacy The Portuguese government erected two navigational beacons, namely Deus Cross and De Gama Cross, as a tribute to the great explorers Bartolome Deus and Vasco da Gama. These pioneers were the first modern European seafarers to successfully reach the Cape of Good Hope. When properly aligned, these crosses serve the purpose of directing attention towards Whittle Rock. This rock, found in False Bay, is a substantial and permanently submerged threat to ships navigating the area. The cross's pin positioning is a practical and ingenious way to guide vessels away from this potentially dangerous obstacle, ultimately ensuring safer passage through these treacherous waters. Diaz Museum Complex The Diaz Museum Complex, located in Mossel Bay, South Africa, offers visitors a captivating blend of history, culture, and natural wonders. One of the most renowned attractions is the famous 500-year-old post office tree, a national treasure that served as a crucial mail system in the 16th century. Additionally, the museum features an impressive life-size replica of the Deus Caravel, providing visitors with an authentic glimpse into the sailing vessel that brought Bartolome Deus to the area in 1488. The museum also houses the Shell Museum and aquarium, showcasing a vast collection of seashells, as well as the ethnobotanical garden, which showcases an array of plants with cultural significance. If you enjoy this channel and you'd like to support more content like this, because all contributions are greatly appreciated, please check out the Patreon link in the description below.